This is a game changer when it comes to overseas comms. I can't believe more people don't know about eSIMs already. So that's why here at S-Money, we're here to tell you exactly about what an eSIM is. But this new tech isn't just for you to be able to call your friends while you're overseas, WhatsApp your mom if you're feeling a little bit lonely. This is perfect for even when you need a little bit of data, if you need a tether from your phone because you've still got work to do. So picture this, you arrive in country on a plane, you start taxiing to the airport and the pilot comes on and says, as you can start using your mobile phone. So you pull it out of your pocket and you turn off the airplane mode and all of a sudden you start receiving messages and maybe some missed calls. You are going to start incurring international roaming charges. You quickly turn it off, keep it on airplane mode and start looking for Wi-Fi. It's a bit spotty as you transfer through uh, immigration, you lose connectivity, maybe you've been idle for too long and there are dozens of hawkers trying to sell you SIM cards. It's all a bit of a hassle. What if all of this could be solved by an existing piece of technology or ready in your phone that you can set up before you leave home. This video is all about eSIMs, the tech behind eSIMs, some eSIMs you should look at and why this is the future of overseas telecommunications. Check it out. Welcome to the future of phone calls and data when overseas. And here at S Money, we're producing a whole series of videos all about tech, travel products, travel cards, money card products that you should be looking at and reviewing prior to going over your next overseas holiday. Needless to say, the introduction of the eSIM has come like a technological tsunami that you completely missed. It's been gunning for the traditional little plastic SIM card for a long time. Probably just like you, I've traveled into another country and had a lot of trouble using a little piece of wire to push into that tiny hole, pull out a SIM card. It's happened from places all the way from Bangkok to Bulgaria. But unlike a traditional little plastic SIM card, an eSIM is actually a piece of technology that is already built into your phone. You simply download a software SIM that you purchase from a provider of your choice, depending on where you're going and what your needs are when you're traveling on the road. So there's no more hunting around for a crazy airport retailer. There's no need for you to incur any really expensive overseas phone call costs. And most importantly, you can purchase your eSIM before you go and choose your plan before you leave the country. Now, as this technology has improved over the last few years, so has competition and therefore prices for things like call, text, data, have come down. This means a lot of values for travelers as lots of different retailers and aggregators have come on the market to give you choice when you're traveling through Asia, Africa, Europe, Middle East. But firstly, there's one caveat to this always. I would recommend checking with your local overseas provider before you go overseas because depending on the type of travel that you actually do, there may be a cheaper alternative that they offer. For example, Vodafone. They offer a $5 all day pass, no matter where you are. Now, if you're on a short trip, that might be great. However, if you're with Telstra, there's a limited data pack for $10 a day, and that can end up being pretty expensive if you're away overseas in Europe for two weeks and you're using heaps of your data. It depends on the type of traveler you are, look into it, look into what options are available before you travel overseas and before you consider purchasing an eSIM. Into the act of buying an eSIM, it's actually really easy. You can do it before you go or you can do it when you arrive in country and you can do it through a third party retailer or you can do it through one of the big networks in the country that you're in. For example, in the US, T-Mobile offer an eSIM that you can download and purchase uh, and use on your existing phone. Other options come from third party providers who specialize in this sort of technology. Eralo and Ubiggy are just a couple of options. I've used Ubiggy before and found it really easy. What we do is go into the app, search your destination, search the type of plan that will work for both the destination that you're going and the type and duration of the trip that you'll be doing and you'll be able to find something that suits your needs. What I love about an eSIM, especially the ones that I've used through Ubiggy, is that it also gives me the option to cover multiple countries in uh, one piece of downloaded eSIM software. So for example, if I'm visiting Thailand, but I'm also going to be transiting through Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia, I can get a data SIM that covers both locations. In fact, it covers all of Asia in the single cost and the single product purchase. These grouped SIMs are available for Europe, Asia, Africa, even Australia, New Zealand. 
and they're just a really easy option if you are going to be visiting multiple countries in one trip. If you're really a big globetrotter and perhaps you're on a, a six month or 12 month trip around the world, you can actually also get an eSIM that covers 87 countries in the one go. You'll never be without connectivity, whatever airport you land in or whatever border you cross, you'll always have the option for telecommunications using your mobile phone and using your eSIM. Now, if you wanna see a comprehensive list of eSIMs and some of the options that we recommend at S Money. We've dropped a little link below, which sort of breaks down some of the different uh, suppliers, third-party suppliers, aggregators that you can reach out to just before you take your next trip. But remember, there is one catch. One of the things you need to make sure of is, do you have the right technology on your phone in order to be able to actually use the eSIM? Now you should be fine unless you're rolling around with an iPhone 4 or a Blackberry. Newer smartphones in the Apple, Oppo, Samsung, and Google family all generally come with eSIM capabilities and the ability for you to toggle between your primary SIM card with your local operator and an eSIM when you're in another country. If you have an iPhone, there's an easy to find section in your mobile data, which allows you to add an eSIM directly underneath your primary number. As always, we like to give you here at S Money the final verdict. Whether an eSIM is worth it, whether we would recommend it, and, and what types of eSIMs or products would we recommend here at S Money? So when you're overseas and you're considering your data or your telephone usage, there's really four options you need to consider here. But for the most part, buying a SIM card is still a pretty good idea once you get into country, um, or getting an eSIM from one of the major providers in the country you're in, like T-Mobile. This is always going to be better than roaming with your local operator, which as we know, can often bite you in the butt and really cause some financial issues if you don't recognize it early. Right off the top, eSIMs are always going to be the best value, especially when it comes to data. The downside though, however, is that you are going to be given a different telephone number and this can be problematic. So if you're overseas and receiving calls is important, perhaps this might not be the right thing for you. You will need to provide the other telephone number from the country you're in to whoever you need to receive phone calls from. And if you're working, that can be tough. However, WhatsApp is generally the go-to voice over internet protocol sort of phone call option these days, and, and a lot of people use it. So uh, getting a different phone number is not a huge idea, and what that can generally work that out for you. The other option is you stick with the roaming package that your local operator in your own country provides to you. In Australia, Vodafone or Telstra. In the US, T-Mobile or Verizon. These can sometimes offer really good roaming packages for short trips. It's easier, it's convenient. If you don't use your phone a lot, $5 a day with Vodafone is a really good option. If you're a little bit hesitant about buying an eSIM or buying a SIM card from someone overseas, you could just scrap that all together. Put your phone on airplane mode and just hop from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi, picking up data and calls only when you need it. Can be a little bit tough if you're a constant social media user or wanna be uploading photos a lot to a social media platform. Not the best way, but it is a, a fairly common way and the way that most people probably still use their mobile phones overseas. Or the final option. Now the iPhone, it does have this funky option where you can toggle between your local roaming charge and an eSIM. And once your local roamer has run out of its data, for example, it will then switch over to your new number and start using that data instead. And that's a really good hybrid way to be maximizing the affordable, say, international roaming package that your local supplier offers and, say, the eSIM that you've been able to purchase through one of the retailers like Aerolo or Ubiggy. eSIMs are fast and convenient, and I've spoken about how fast and convenient they are, but I must stress, don't rush into buying one. Do your research. Don't do it while you're taxiing from one gate to another just before you're getting into another country. Look at what offers are out there and you can often find lots of comparative sites where you can look at the options and even in the link below, that's another one from S Money where we've given you all the options of where you can look for the best eSIM to suit you. They are a game changer. They're a technological advancement that probably you guys didn't know even existed, but I'm glad we're able to share them with you today. We're gonna to be making a lot more videos like this at S Money, including product reviews, travel money cards, destination reviews, stuff that we know that travelers care about. So make sure you stop back here at our YouTube channel. We'll be sharing with you the next updates in our new travel series.